In the mind of Trey Anastasio with the master music formula for Fast Enough For You. Uh, my wife was listening to a live concert about a week ago. Fast Enough For You came on, and I, I realized how amazing of a solo uh, the album version is, of course, but what Trey was doing live, and I said, okay, that's my next video. So here we go. Uh, in case you're unfamiliar with the song, uh, it's a great song to practice uh, improvising, your soloing, and of course, seeing that master music formula layout. It's a nice slow tempo, only three chords in the jam, and uh, with that being said, let's get down to it. Music equals scales and or chord tones over chords uh, plus the human element. So the first thing we want to look at is the chord progression. Very interesting chord progression when we look at it. It is E flat for two beats, B flat for two beats, and C major for two beats. All right. So what does that do for us? Well, first and foremost, the bass line is very interesting. The bass line is E flat, D, B flat to C. And that, that D throws uh, a lot of people off, including me for a little bit. When we look at that, we have to look at what's going on there. Um, the bass line. All right, we, are we doing, is it going from an E flat to a B flat, which would be a B flat, a B flat slash D, because you're, here's the one, three, five, one, to make a long story short. But really what it is, I want to explain this, it's an E flat and then E flat major seven, that bass line, that root note comes down one step, adding the seven to the chord. So it's really uh, a B flat. Uh, sorry, it's really an E flat, is what I'm saying. E flat, E flat, B flat, C. It's just the bass line that's moving, it's kind of this illusion. And when we look at how Trey kind of treats it, uh, through soloing, we find that really uh, it's it's more of an E flat chord that we're looking at, and also when you listen to the page playing, he's hitting an E flat twice. All right, and so that's the chord progression. That that's the bottom of our cupcake. That's our denominator. It's E flat for two bars, B flat for two bars, and C for four bars. All right, do we have a key? No, uh, we do not have a key. With the, when you look at this, we have three major chords. They are not the one, four, and five of any key that I know. Although E flat and B flat can be in a key itself, it could be the one to five in B flat. It could be the, uh, sorry, it could be, um, if I actually knew what I was doing, it's the one, it could be the one to five in E flat, or it could be the four to one in B flat. Okay, cool, so we look at that and we go, Maybe it's one of those, but then we have B flat to C, and it's like, huh, uh, that could be the four to five in the key of F, B flat being the four chord, five being the C chord, but we don't have, we don't have a key of B flat, we don't have a key in E flat, we don't have a key of F. Um, we have these three chords, beautiful chord progression, excuse me. So how does one handle this? How does one, uh, Ernest Anastasio, handle this? And he does it in the style that he does so well, which is he moves, um, the chord tones slash pentatonics, we'll talk about that, with each chord. Uh, that's his That's his style, that's his main thing, and he kind of, he not stole it, he is definitely influenced by Hendrix, because that's the Hendrix thing, is moving pentatonics with chords. But more importantly, what Trey does is he's not as heavy with pentatonics as he is with arpeggios and chord tones. So let's take a look at this. Let's do this in a place where we can kind of understand what's happening here. I'm gonna do it on the third fret here for everyone. Patreon will have the practice sessions, we'll have doing this all over the neck and kind of tying it together uh, linearly. But let's kind of keep it simple if we can. Okay, so we have an E flat chord first, and now I'm going to make my C shaped um, bar chord on the third fret. That's an E flat. That's my first chord. All right. Then we have a B flat, which is the G shaped chord. Now I can play the thick side or I can play the thin side. If any questions about this, check out my caged primer playlist. This is video number one. So we have E flat. B flat, and then we have C right here. All right, and the C chord here, to be honest, I'm gonna mentally just just so you can see it, I'm gonna move it up here to the G shape, up two frets from the B flat. There's the B flat here. Okay, I was gonna stay in one place, but I realized I want to move for you guys. So we have E flat third fret C shape, B flat um, G shape third fret, and then we have 
C, which is the G shape on the fifth fret. So you just want to practice that really quickly. Boom, I can pick a guitar, right? And you just kind of want to play along. I have a backing track. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to warm myself up. We're, we're baking that cupcake. We're looking at that denominator. And so I'm going to put the backing track on. I'm just going to play those chords, right? So I practice those chords, you can see them. Now, what does Trey do here? When you listen to the album version, which is probably one of the most beautiful solos, you know, out there, um, it sounds so amazing. And when you realize that it's pretty much 100% chord tones, maybe 99% with a little bit of pentatonic sprinkled in, but the idea is that it's all chord tones. So you wanna look at your arpeggios. So let's take that C shape, E flat chord. The C shaped arpeggio, again, this is available in my Cage Masterclass. Uh, from this whole entire shape here, frets three, six, six, five, three, four, three, five, oh, sorry, six at the end, there we go. All right, you wanna practice that. I'm going to practice that arpeggio shape up. All right, next, and down. Uh, next is the G-shaped arpeggio. Very easy arpeggio shape. Uh, six, five, three, 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 six, six. And then the C shape, sorry, the C chord is the same exact arpeggio shape that we're going to do uh, two frets up. So we have... Those are the notes we're going to use, and now when we pay attention to what's happening, um, we are now getting into the numerator, the uh, music equals scales and or chord tones, all right, happening with those chords. So we're up there, and we have the arpeggios of the chords that are happening in order. And so we're not getting to the human element just yet, we will get to it, but let's see what happens when I play just those chord arpeggios um, and give it a little bit of like, you know, uh, musicality to it, not just arpeggios up and down. Uh, let's see what it sounds like. Here we go. because this is exactly what Trey is doing. Now he's doing it, you know, all across the fretboard at boss level. And so, um, yes, definitely practice the chords with the chord progression that gives you the, the denominator. Practicing the arpeggios on top of it gives you that numerator or the frosting, as we say. So now, the human element of everything. We have the two pieces of the cupcake, and now we're gonna to move to enjoying it, or uh, the human element, the size symbol of the master music equation. Uh, what does Trey do in this? Now, the biggest thing that I wanna talk about first, we're gonna to get to bending, we're gonna to get to all this, but we're gonna be talking about using the B flat arpeggio to decide which direction you wanna go in for the C. Let me show you. When the E flat comes, we're gonna be using this arpeggio here, the C-shaped arpeggio. I'm not going to do it straight up and down, I'm going to, all right, I'm going to kind of just uh, play with it. I'll show you some stuff in a little bit. When I get to the B-flat arpeggio, when I, when I sink into it and I pick my direction, let's say I come in on the root and I come up here, and I'm right here, I have to decide during that B-flat um, moment, do I want to bring the line up into the C or down into the C. Did you hear the difference in direction? So when I'm here, if I decide I want to go up, I'm going to head towards those thinner strings, the higher notes. If I ended here and I say, well, I want to bring the melody down, I'm going to try and bring it down, kind of like bring the, literally just bring the music into the lower notes. And I find that if you 
mentally revolve around that B, B flat as being a, a, a turning point or uh, how I say when Jerry Garcia zigs when you think he's going to zag, that's the moment you want to take advantage of uh, the direction of everything. So what I'm going to do right now is just do another solo. But when I'm on the B flat, I'm going to kind of like really listen to where I am and decide what I want to do with that C and do I want to go up or down. Now, I wanted to show you one thing. I have the C here, but I'm also going to use the C arpeggio here, the A shape right here, and that's going to be three. Sorry, that's going to be three, three, two, five, 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 three. That's the A shape chord. That's the arpeggio shape. The reason I'm going to introduce that is because if I decide to go down low, and the only option I have right now is just like this, but if I go down low, I could, I could, uh, you know, come down that way. Hope that made sense. So let's let's see what it sounds like. Uh, taking advantage of that B flat and what I'm going to do with it. have our map here that we're kind of all working with together and again the patreon sessions they're going to have um you know putting it all together across the neck and how to see it and how to practice it with the fret numbers everything i pretty much did to get this video rolling all right so um human element stuff that you want to look at all right one thing you want to look at is bending that f to a g uh, when you look at the notes of an e flat chord it's e flat b flats and g's and that note that note g is in the chord and the, the thing that trey does a lot is take the f which is right here a uh, sixth fret of the b and down into the e flat he's really just using here's the one this is the two of the scale we're going to talk about this in a second bending up to the uh, major third coming down into the one, and then by that time you're in the B flat. All right, and there's that B flat arpeggio. Now, this brings up a great discussion here of, is Trey using pentatonics? And the answer is, he is in the slightest, slightest way, which is totally just these little tiny foot bridges towards your arpeggios. So studying the pentatonics that go with the shapes, very important. So let's just look at that really quickly and see if we can get a handle on that. So the C shape, we have the arpeggio, but now we have that form four, or the C shape pentatonic. And if you remember my how to solo with the music video, I, I always say you can take a non-chord tone where this is the root, this is the two, and you can mess with it, and he does. He brings it up to the three. Down to the root note. And he might mess around with other ones, but bending the F to the G to hit that major third, the E flat, is such a move that you hear Trey do. Um, also, uh, you hear him definitely put in on live performances these um, like you enjoy myself type arpeggios where he's doing these like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, these little sets. Boo -doo 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 Right? And so you might, you know, putting in little clusters, bending. Let's talk about that bend there. You're going to hear him do. This is a pentatonic, and this is the form one pentatonic. It goes with the G shape here. And we have. Uh, look at the, the intervals one, two, three, five, six, one. Here's the two, bending up to the major third. All right, it's the same exact move we do for the uh, E flat, but this is a human element that Trey likes to put in. So let's see if we can use the arpeggios, use pentatonics very, very slightly, very slightly. Uh, if you need to uh, mess with that root note and that major second into the major third, uh, when you need to, and play some arpeggios against the chords that are happening. Let's see if we can get this.
we go. All right, so now he's doing that all across the fretboard. So if you want to say, okay, you know, I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to learn all my E flats and B flats and C arpeggios, which we'll do in Patreon if you need help, and I'll show you how I mentally did it. Uh, go do it. This is it right here. But let's just talk about the ending of the solo. It's very hard um, to emulate the ending of the solo without the band Fish behind you uh, because they help build the chords. Page takes those chords and from the low end and he starts putting them towards the high end. Um, Gordon starts adding, you know, higher notes and then dropping these bombs as as the resolve comes. And so I just want to show you what Trey does and what you can do to resolve this. Okay, so at the end, he's up here. He's using arpeggios and he's he's using E flat, B flat, and C. You know, he's up here. Now, when he wants to start getting towards the end, he's going to grab the same exact arpeggios that we were talking about right here, an octave higher. Okay, and you're going to hear him come in usually. Sorry, with that bend, the F to the G, and then slide into the that was the B flat, and then into the C, and he kind of like this is that high C and kind of like hits it. So you're gonna hear him at the end of the solo, kind of work his way up to the octave point where we are, and kind of like you know he he'll have his distortion on. I'm gonna turn my distortion on. It might be too heavy of a distortion, but. Um, yeah, let's see what this sounds like. Oh, there it is. All right, let's just see. You're going to hear him like... built up to there like that. Not necessarily just like I did. That was kind of depressing. Uh, but that's really the art form of soloing over um, fast enough for you. Really, really simple uh, in, in idea. Uh, getting, getting those arpeggios down, making them flow together, using some bends, and deciding which direction you want to go in uh, when you hit that B flat really adds that human element. And so I'm going to play myself out. You're going to see what I'm doing here. Again, if you want to practice this, get this down, um, join me on Patreon practice sessions. We'll get, we'll, we'll do it, but thank you so much for being here. And this is the master music formula in action. Uh, how you got to look at it from the ground up to be a successful guitar player. Uh, I'll stop talking. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you soon.